the top 10 reasons why you should subscribe to this channel and learn about the Cagayan Valley history. Before I begin, where is the Cagayan Valley at all? Well, you have to go off the coast of China, south of Taiwan, the northeastern part of Luzon is a valley with a river called the Cagayan River. It is the location of the history that I am going to explain throughout the next 20 or so videos to give people an understanding of a place that I fell in love with. Number one, it is the oldest known location for ancient hominid activity on an island right outside present day to Gigarau. 709,000 years ago, a hominid butchered a rhinoceros philippinensis and for some reason forgot its knife. Number two, the hominid that butchered this Filipino rhino was probably Homo luzonensis a unique small hominid that somehow sailed to Luzon hundreds of thousands of years ago. It wasn't a great ocean crossing, but nonetheless still impressive. Maybe it happened as long as a million years ago. Number three, not only does the Cagayan Valley have its own hominid, it also has evidence of the earliest known human activity on an island. Around 60,000 years ago, the first human activity on the island took place. Since we find so much activity of hominids in this valley, there must be something unique for it to have the ability to have life. And I'll go into why it's such a great place for humans to live. Number four. The Ita people. The Ita people arrived in the Philippines about 20,000 years ago. But the real shocker is from where? They came from the Indus Valley. And because the Ita have almost no relationship with any other point in Southeast Asia, it is believed that they took a boat journey directly to Luzon Island and made that their home. Number five, if you're a Polynesian or anyone of any other Southeastern descent, your ancestors once lived in the Cagayan Valley. In fact, 5% of the world population can trace their ancestry back to this small valley and the development of Polynesian art, like the tattoo art that you see in the movie Moana. So I wanted to interject right here, right in the middle of the video to kind of give you a demonstration of what I'm talking about so you can understand that one, the science isn't being made up. This is the actual history of the Austronesian people. And I think a great example is Jay Smoove. Here we go. We're there. Um, holy crap. Okay, so judging by the look at this, it says I'm less than one percent African, okay, from the Ma Mali region, okay. Somehow we all have our roots in Africa. It's a good theory that everybody, yes, did probably come out of Africa. We don't know that for sure, but we're pretty confident that's true. However, the reason why he probably has DNA mixed in Mali was Austronesian people. So way back in the day, some of his cousins of his family tree, got on boats, went to Madagascar, and they believe there might have been a group that went around the horn and ended up in Mali somehow, and their DNA is now found among the people of Mali. Um, obviously Asian. I'm I'm 63%, which I guess, I, I probably thought I'd be like somewhere in the 80s or 90s, considering what mix I thought I was. I'm only 63%. Um, Asia East, which is primarily located in Russia, China, North Korea. <laughs> Imagine I was North Korean. Um, North Korea, South Korea, Mongolia, Myanmar, Japan, Taiwan, uh, Myanmar. 
as you can see right here, he shows a big group of area. This is coming from ancestry.com. And that's because the Austronesian people, there was two different groups. One of the groups, uh, well, Austronesian people originally came at, down out of Russia, down through Mongolia into China, and then crossed over the strait into Taiwan. And from Taiwan, came out of this little tiny island and went north and south. The people who went south, of course, ended up first in the Cagayan Valley. And apparently I'm one, okay, so I'm 63% Asian, 62% of that is Asia East, which is all the regions that I just named. Um, and apparently I'm 1% South Asian, which is primary, primarily located in India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. I had no idea. Uh, but here's the, here. Now we know why that is, because we talked about the Ita. He probably has an ancestor that was an Ita and it intermixed into his family, the bloodline. And so it's showing a little bit of that bloodline that came 20,000 years ago from the Indus Valley. I'm straight up on Asian, man. See, there were some com conflicting reports. Ask one person on this, ask another person where this. Um, and that's why, that's mainly the reason why I wanted to take this whole, this whole ancestor DNA thing, just so I can figure out exactly, exactly what I am. This last part here is, um, might be confusing to some people why is he if if the austronesian people came to the philippines and then the ancestors left and went to polynesia how is he polynesian well that's because the austronesian people didn't just make one migration they migrated to islands throughout their whole history the polynesian the people who became the polynesian people left but eventually came back to luzon that time period the interaction between the islands was a lot more than maybe is being explained. The issue that we have is we don't have a written record really. One, because the Filipino language was, I wouldn't say destroyed, but kind of disregarded by the Europeans when they arrived. So the writings kind of just disappeared. And so we don't have good records of what was going on before the Europeans arrived. Number six the lost kingdom of Itui. I lived in Itui for almost eight months and no one there calls it by its name. They now call it Nueva Vizcaya, a place which Luis Perez das Marinas, the son of the first governor of the Philippines, claimed for himself under the encomienda system. For 300 years, the Spanish were never able to conquer these people. Number seven, the largest rice terrace structure ever built on an island. Built by the Ifugao people could span about half the circumference of the world. Most of these terraces were built in less than a hundred years after the arrival of the Spanish in the late 16th and 17th centuries. Number eight, the odd headhunting tradition that seems to originate around the first Austronesian people who landed in the Philippines. A system that kept order among the tribes, but more importantly, population control. It also was a significant part of religious traditions of the Austronesian people. Number nine, this mysterious gold mines that the Spanish were never able to locate nor conquer. And last, 10, the murder of the real Indiana Jones, America's first Native American PhD who gave his life trying to help the Longo people. The Cagayan Valley is full of history, a history that is lost to the world. I spent two years of my life in the Cagayan Valley. I love history myself and asked those who I interacted with to tell me about the place. Most knew nothing. Uh, they were Ilocano immigrants to the area who never spoke the languages of the valley, Gadang, Ibanag, Sinai, the many languages that developed in the area. The ones who were direct descendants, the original people who resided in the valley, they didn't really know the stories from their family. In fact, the only person that I can remember that could give me any detail was an Ifagao shaman who shared with me some of the traditions and belief systems of the Ifagao people 
but even I could tell they were heavily influenced by biblical tradition. Pay attention to this channel. I'll keep posting more videos and hopefully keep you up to date on the history of the Kagaya Valley. Thank you so much for watching this adventure of trying to learn the Kagayan Valley history and put it all together has been incredibly difficult. I know some of the information that I'm going to share throughout these videos might not be completely accurate because good records were not taken. If you have any information, you can email me at the email below, or if you have any comments you want to make about the video, something maybe I got incorrect or something you want to add on to, please comment below. And Maybe in the future, if you are a history buff about the area, I can do a video with you and you can explain some things that I don't know. I only have information based upon what people have written down and I'm looking for more. So if you know someone that knows a lot of history about the area, I'd be happy to talk to them.